3D printing, rail height, all sorts of different questions. You guys got a lot of them, and I'm going to answer some of them today. Hey, everybody, my name's Jimmy. I'm drinking some local coffee today, and this is Coffee and Trains. This video is brought to you with support from my patrons on Patreon. These videos would not be possible without them, and if you'd like to join the Patreon community, you can follow the link in the description below and join for as little as $1 a month. All right, let's hop right into this with our first question, and that comes from Will Everett. And he asks, which is better, resin or the other kind, which is FDM or fused deposition modeling, the one that uses the filament. So there's really two different use cases for that. And I've actually got two different models right here. Now this is my uh, building two. It's actually the redesign of building two. You can't really tell from here, but I've done some rework to it for my Etsy store. And this is printed with resin. And basically the reason I do that with resin is because I want a lot of high detail, specifically with the brick and the front facade and things like that. So resin is really good for high detail options. Now, if you're looking at the other one, A, it's gonna you're gonna get bigger printers with uh, FDM printing, the filament printing. And you also can make things that are more utility, like I'm printing these little um, things to attach to my model railroad. Spoiler, you're gonna see that in the next layout update. But I'm printing these little things with screw holes in them, so you can do that. But if you also need to do large structures that don't have a ton of detail, or you're working on a larger scale, using the FDM printers is going to be your best bet. So if you're looking at detail work, which is what a lot of us use uh, 3D printing and model railroading for, you're gonna be really looking at resin printing, especially if you're only planning on doing detailing parts. Parts. Um, if you're looking for larger things, especially if you're in HOO scale and up, uh, you really want to look at that FDM printer for your larger things and you can still have a resin printer. So they both have their pros and cons. Thank you, Will, for that question. Let's go on to our next one. Peter Minigan, he actually asked um, a quick question about my Patreon. So he asked how the engineer level works at on my Patreon. So that is my highest level, $5 a month. And basically you get all the benefits of the previous levels. And at the beginning of the month, a post that only the engineers can see is all the download links for all the different pieces of the model of the month. So that's how that works. I'm trying to figure out a good way to have a whole database of all the previous models. I haven't found one that I'm really happy with yet. So I am working on that because I know that's something that is a bit of a sticking point and I really want to get that figured out. So, but I charge a flat rate. It's one of your benefits for um, being a patron at the engineer level. So thank you, Peter, for that question. Um, Neil Kreider, he asks this question. He says he has a question regarding the use of Y throttle when it comes to DCC++ and DCC++ EX. There is a difference. So Y throttle is the app for iOS. The engine driver app is the most popular one for Android. There's actually several for each. And these are used to control your trains, your DCC trains through your phone. So when you are using those for DCC++, you are not connecting directly to the DCC base station. So with regular DCC++, you have to have a computer running JMRI, and then at JMRI, actually, you turn on a Wi-Fi throttle server that can connect, you can connect engine driver, or in your case, Y throttle to. Now, DCC++ EX changed all of that. So they have a way that you can do DCC++ EX where you put either a Wi-Fi shield or a Wi-Fi module on it, and you can actually create your own little Wi-Fi network or you can attach it to the Wi-Fi network in your house and you can correct, connect directly to the base station through that app. And that's one thing that's really, really cool about DCC++ EX and I'm using it on, I've actually got it on two layouts right now, MRR1, I upgraded it, and this one's running on DCC++ EX. So thanks for the question, Neil. Let's go on to our next question. Melville Kitson, he asks, um, what is the norm for someone to go off different code? What is height of track and things like that? In terms of, he's talking about the code of track. Um, I kind of uh, spoke on this a little bit on what, like for instance, an HO scale code 100 versus code 83 versus some of the other codes. The two main ones are code 100 and code 83. So basically code 100 is probably the tallest rail you're going to be able to find in 
HO scale. For N scale, it's code 80, and there's a few other ones. Um, but let's just stick with HO scale. So for that, um, it's really taller than prototype, and it's really used a lot of times for starter sets and people just getting into it and are really concerned with the ease of running because you're going to have less of a chance of derailment with taller rails. For instance, Bachman Easy Track is code 100. Now, I do know that there are some really high-end model railroads that use code 100. Um, NS Modeler 24, many of you know him. His railroad that he built with his dad, that's on code 100. So it's not really that big of a look difference, but you can notice if you really, really look. Now, Code 83 is a more prototypical uh, mainline height in HO scale, and for those of you wondering what these numbers are, these represent a percentage of an inch. So Code 100 is a tenth of an inch. Um, code 83 is 83 one hundredths of an inch. So that's what those are. And the two big codes that compare to that in N scale are code 80, same thing, and code 55. So that's what um, the really the rail height's for. And they're really for authenticity because I think you also have code 70. And I think you even have a, a lower code in HO scale. I think it's in the 50s. I can't remember exactly. Someone comment um, if you can remember that. But it's really just when you go to the smaller heights you're talking about less used rails such as siding such as branch lines and not the main lines so but the main line height for ho scale just because i'm going off of that is at code 83 and then code 100 is just slightly taller than code 83. so thank you melville for that question before we continue i do want to talk about some of the coffees you guys are drinking ian mason blair says he's drinking folgers black silk brewed strong and black that is a great way to take some coffee. Let's see here. Explore Off-Road says that he is drinking Kicking Horse Coffee. It's a small British Columbia, Canada brand. There's actually a lot of people on here that drink Kicking Horse. So it makes me want to figure out how I can order it and get it down here into the States, uh, particularly the Southeast. So, and last but not least, Kaba or Cabas, uh, Cabas. <laughs> Sorry if I just completely butchered your username. But he says he is drinking uh, Seattle's best Henry's blend. He says he can't get enough of it. I'll just keep adding coffees to my list. Also, if you are someone who owns a coffee roaster or knows someone who owns a coffee roaster, I am trying to broaden my coffees. So um, you can hit me up in my email, ddrrcommunity at gmail.com. That's listed in the description below. But I'm trying to try some new smaller roasting companies for coffees. But let's get back into the questions. Let's see here. Jason Earl, he says, we need more structures in your Etsy store. What is going on? Well, what is going on? I haven't had a lot up recently. Well, the big thing that's going on is that I am going through a redesign. You kind of heard me mention this, like this is a, this is building two. Um, I've been going through a big redesign with these. Um, the first thing you're going to notice is that um, there's no windows on the side anymore. Um, I'm just making those brick and I've also worked on the brick texture to make them look a bit older and more natural. And I've also made the windows a little bit easier to paint. So those are a couple things that I have done and I'm doing to a lot of the models and it just takes a while because the uh, export process for getting these models out takes a while because they have a lot of little polygons on the models so it really takes a lot I'm not sure if I can actually get it that close to see you can see that I've got a bit more of a natural looking brick texture than before um, and you can see that I also have no windows so that's just actually that's just a prototype so that's um not quite what it's going to look like but uh, that's what's going on with the Etsy store, and I'm also hoping, hoping I can have some more HO scale models. Um, I'm going to talk more about that um, in the next episode when I'm doing some 3D printing stuff, but um, hoping to have some more HO scale stuff because I know a lot of you want that. So, and let's go on to our next question. Chris Painter says, could I do a follow-up video explaining how the lighting effects actually go onto the layout um, and the wiring involved? So when you're doing these kind of lighting jobs, you're really going to have custom works. But I've done several videos on how to do different wiring setups and take the Arduinos and actually put them underneath. The easiest way that I like is to put everything on a wood board and then screw it in and then use screw terminals or even plugs and uh, sometimes even... Um, 
little like DC barrel plugs and things like that and use those as your connectors and then just running the wires um, through terminal strips and things like that. And I have several videos where I've done several uh, different ways of doing this and I'm gonna link them all at the end of this video. I might wanna make a playlist out of that. That'd be a good idea. But so that's how I do it. Uh, you're really just gonna be running the wires through the baseboard depending on how you can get there. And as usual with most other um, model railroading wiring products, you gotta get a little bit creative and hire, hiding the wire, but it's really custom uh, each way, but I use a lot of barrel plugs. I use a lot of uh, DC power packs. Um, I use a lot of buses for like 12 volt and five volt. And then I also, um, I use a lot of terminal strips and things like that. So basically you're just kind of doing little electronics projects, which is the really fun part of doing Arduino because it's all custom. So, but that's, that's kind of how I do it. I probably should do a video where I go over all of that. So thank you so much for that question. If you have questions that you want to get to me and you want to have answered on here, put them in the comments below. What I do is I basically, I read them and then I organize which ones I can answer right off the bat in a short format like this. Sometimes if it is something that takes a while to answer, I may actually make a video on it, but you can put those comments with your questions right here below this video. And I just want to say thank you guys so, so much for watching. Until next time, I'm Jimmy from the DIY and Digital. Stay safe, be kind, drink some coffee, and happy railroading.